Ms. Darby from RejoiceAndCreate.com. Thanks for stopping by today. Please hit the subscribe so you can stay around with me for a little while longer. Well, last week I did this cute little beehive and it holds about a Ferrero share or a little handful of small candies. And I was asked if I could do just a little bit bigger one, maybe to fit a few uh, candles or perhaps some wax melts. And what I came up with was this one. Now I think it's very sweet. This is a retired paper from Stampin' Up! and I'm sorry if it's shiny, but it is a foil based paper and I thought that was really uh, sweet for a beehive. Um, but it is a three, in, three inch diameter octagon and it's about three inches tall, although the shoulders are about two and a half inches tall. So it makes a really fun little gift uh, for someone if you want to put a little bit more into it. So what you'll need for this project is a piece of pattern paper cardstock that is ten and a half by eight inches. And then you'll need a little a spot for the door. I have a little black half of an oval. You can use what you want. And then whatever uh, bees or sentiments or anything else that you want. And about a 10 inch piece of ribbon or twine to uh, thread through the top and close it. Um, I also have a mid-size one between the big and the small. And um, I haven't finished the template for this one yet, but it will be on my website when I do. So just go to rejoiceandcreate.com if you want something between the big and the small. All right, so let's get going. All right, so I have my 10 and a half by eight inch piece of paper, pattern paper or pattern cardstock. And I'm going to score the 10 inch side at one and one quarter inches, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, and 10. Essentially, it's every one and a quarter inches across the top. All right, so let's move that top to the left if there is a directional pattern. And we will score it at one and a quarter inches, two and three quarters of an inch, and at five. All right, so let's fold and burnish all of our score lines. Okay, so let me bring in a template to show what we're going to do. This is our score right now. Uh, we did our one and a quarter inch score lines all the way across the top, and we have that half an inch glue tab on the right. And then we did the one and a quarter, the two and three quarters, and the five this way. So what we're going to do first is we're going to cut up all the bottom score lines to that first intersecting score line. And we're going to cut off that last half an inch piece. So let's turn it around and work on the top. And that's where we have the one quarter, one and one quarter inch sections. Let me turn this around. And what we're going to do, I have it up like this. And now the half an inch is over here because I've turned it around. So we're gonna take off that half an inch tab and we're gonna cut up every single score line again to the first intersecting score line. All right, let me just turn around this way again. So we're right side up. And all these are cut up to that first intersecting score line. Now. What we'll do is we're going to have to remove some of those tabs on top. So what I'm going to do is actually start on this one right next to the tab. And the reason I do that is so that when I glue it together, one of these angled score lines doesn't hit the uh, seam where the seam is. So it makes it doubly thick. All the angled score lines will hit on single thicknesses of paper. That's why I cut this first one off by the tab. All right, now save one of these and I'll show you why in a minute.
Okay, so this is what we have. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to have to put in these angled score lines, and that's what gives us the beehive top of it. So we're going to have to uh, take a ruler and a stylus. And I have this. And right in the center of this section that we just cut off, we're going to score from there down to the bottom left and the bottom right of the rectangle that is right there. So here is, let me move this up so you can see what I'm doing. Here is the center right there, and here is the bottom left score line, or the left intersection, so we're gonna score down that way, and then we're gonna take it and score down to the bottom on the right. Okay, so I scored there and there, just like that and that. Now we're gonna repeat this on every place that we have a gap. Okay, so now we're going to actually fold our angled score lines just gently like this. Let me take the template out and we will do one more thing. And as I said, save one of these uh, squares. And we're going to use this as a template to make our holes in the top because you see right here we have a hole in the center of each top that's left, the square tabs that are left. But what I'm going to do is actually make a little template for myself. All right, so I have one of the squares that I cut off, which is one and a quarter by one and a quarter. If you want to do it um, fresh, you can just take a one and a quarter by one and a quarter inch piece of cardstock. And I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw it from corner to corner. A line turn it and draw a line from the other corner the other diagonal <clears throat> and then right where they intersect I'm going to punch a small hole and I'm using the 1 16th inch punch because I still have it but you could use a 1 8th of an inch punch as well and just right on that right on the intersection I'm doing a hole and that's going to help me mark the center because the, the closer you get to the center on these the better the box top will close. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up all the way across and just draw a dot where my punch needs to be. All right, I'm going to go ahead and punch an eighth of an inch hole. Size yours accordingly. I might make it bigger. I haven't decided what ribbon I'm going to use yet. Oh, yeah, that's one eighth of an inch. So go ahead and set it right over that dot and punch the hole and I'll get you in the center. So there's our box. Now I may make this a little bit bigger once I decide what ribbon I like. But for the meantime, let's go ahead and seal up our box. Use a strong bit of adhesive. I'm using the Tombow Extreme. And I actually get that at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Although I've just recently put a Michaels online order to get it as well. All right, let me fold this out and we'll fold. Now we will cross the bottoms over and these bottoms will cross all the way across. So when you're um, judging the distance of it, it actually will go all the way across and actually might be a little bit long. So you might have to trim off just a little bit on each side if you find you're going over. Now I'm heading just right at the fold line on this one, the crease, so I think that I'm gonna be okay on that. And I'm going to use some liquid glue. All right, turn that over and we'll press down inside and it's big enough for me to get my hand in, which is good because I can give it a good press all the way around. All right, so now let's go ahead and close down what the top's gonna look like. And these four tabs on top will fold over each other 
and I will pull a ribbon or a twine right up through the inside of that. All right, so I have about 10 inch piece of ribbon and because of the gold accents on this piece of paper, which happened to be a retired Stampin' Up! paper, I'm going to use a ribbon with a gold side on it to make it look nice and elegant. Just go ahead and fold over your maybe 10 inch piece of ribbon and I'll just trim that off. All right, and then I'm going to uh, thread it from side to side and back to front. So the front will fold over last and it'll make the front end look neat. Oh, I think that looks really elegant. All right, so this is my front. Let me go ahead and put my sentiment on there, which I already made to save a little bit of time. And I already stamped out my little bees as well. And on this one, I put B, a blessing. And the a blessing part of it actually came from the same stamp set that the B came from. And that's the very vintage. And this says, you're a blessing. I just stamped out the a blessing part. And I put that B from another alphabet stamp set I had over the top of it. But I think it'd be cute actually to do the B over it too, which would be really sweet. All right, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of door on it. So I have a, let's see, one and three quarter inch by seven eighths inch oval punch, but you can use whatever you have or just cut it by hand. And I'm just gonna cut half of that for my door. And there my bigger beehive is finished. Isn't that sweet? Let me put that up like that so you can see it. And here's my other one that I did. And here's my small one. And as I mentioned, if you want a mid-size one, I will finish the template and put that one up on there as well. So I hope you enjoyed the project and give it a try. If you liked the video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to be notified of new videos as I upload them. For more information on this project and other projects I've done, please go to rejoiceandcreate.com and under this blog post, you will also find the templates for the large and the medium size. And as always, until we meet again, I hope your days are blessed. Bye.